Thanks. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hello, Coach. How are you? How you doing? Good have a seat. See you. Absolutely. Have a seat. All right, now we're gonna welcome the University of Texas to the press conference today. Thank you for your participation. We are now joined by three Texas guards, sophomore Rory Harmon, junior Shay Holly, and graduate Shaylee Gonzalez, and head coach Vic Schaefer. We will begin the press conference with an opening statement from Coach Schaefer. Coach, congratulations to everyone once again on your NCAA championship. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks everybody for being here. Excited to be here. Um, really uh, proud of my team, uh, proud of their accomplishments this year. And um, again, I think they're excited to have this opportunity. Uh, certainly, we're appreciative of the opportunity to host. I think our the other three teams, congratulations to them as well. And uh, know they've had a great season and uh, they're all hot. And uh, so it's a it's a it's a great uh, Great regional here, and uh, just um, again, congratulations to them. They're gonna they're gonna get to play in an amazing arena. Uh, they're gonna get to be in an amazing city uh, for the next few days, and uh, hopefully, they'll get to enjoy the the great culture and the and the food that we have here, and uh, the people that are here in Austin, Texas. So, um, again, uh, excited about our opportunity. This group's been through a lot. Uh, I'm awfully proud of them. I couldn't be more proud of a group that's had to endure and, and go through what they've been through this year. Um, I think she, uh, uh, Jeremy told me, the, uh, maybe I saw this in the paper, that Shaley Gonzalez is the only player on our team that started every game this year. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it, 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 I was just asked by the ESPN folks about our our team and, and maybe what makes them so special and where we are today. And, you know, I think it's the journey. I think it's going through those things that we've been through um, and, and in the accomplishments and, and some of the challenges that they've had. I think that's, that's what you have to learn to embrace and uh, just keeping your eye on every step up the mountain. Because if you don't, you'll slip and fall all the way to the bottom. And we talked about that uh, way back. And I think this group has had great focus in that. They've really um, focused on the step every day, uh, trying to climb the mountain and, uh, and um, tried not to slip on their way. And again, uh, I'm, I'm really proud of them. I think, again, um, I heard it this morning, you got to play the hand you're dealt like it's the one you always wanted. We certainly didn't want the injuries that we've had this year, but when we had those happen, we had to embrace that. The kids that were available, we had to coach them and teach them and give them everything we had. And we had to trust that our training staff would get those that were injured and hurt, get them ready to go, which they've done. So I've really, uh, really have enjoyed this group. They're a fun group. They're great kids. I'm happy for them. And I'm excited about uh, getting to play tomorrow night. I'm always excited about the next game. So. Um, Appreciate everybody being here today. Thank you, Coach. Now we're going to ask that the next uh, series of questions be directed to our three student athletes here. And uh, if if you have a question, please raise your hand, and uh, the microphone will come to you. And just state your name and your affiliation, please. We'll start here. Go ahead and try again. I think we're fine now. Basic te technology, all right. Um, any of the players, all three of you have won tournament games. Um, Shaylee, obviously, at BYU. Rory and Shay here at Texas. What can you learn from those prior years that you can apply to this tournament run and just what these next couple weeks are about? And that question was from Danny Davis, Austin American Statesman. Um, like you said, we've all been through some uh, – we all played some good games and won some uh, tournaments and championships, but I feel like we, you know, whatever works at the time and whatever worked during that time, you should capitalize on that. And whatever wasn't working, you just work on it until it works. So, 
Um, I'll just say that the NCAA tournament is just a dogfight. I feel like any team can um, have their night. There's been upsets already on the men's side, and um, you know we just got to come out there focused and prepared. Yeah, I mean to add to that, having like all of us having that experience, I think we need to share that with our younger girls since we do have a lot of new faces that are playing big minutes and we need them to play well for us. So I think just sharing that experience with them, making sure we're ready to go no matter what team we're facing because everyone in this like that's here is talented and capable of winning. So I think just passing along that experience and making sure we're ready to go. Thank you for that question, Danny. Next question, front row. Uh, Jim Vertuno with the Associated Press. Rory, uh, for, and for really any of the players, can you just – Address what, what Vic was talking about, just the fact that you know, at any given point in the season, somebody was down, somebody was hurt, and all the – Rory, I know you had your own deal. Um, just what it was like trying to adjust to those constant lineup adjustments and, and, and how you were able to, to kind of knit it together at the right time. Oh, it was definitely hard. Like you said, I've been through my own. Um, it was really unexpected a lot with all the other injuries, um, not being able to play the first five games um, – it kind of set us back a little bit because, like I said, it wasn't unexpected, and I've been practicing every day up until that point, basically. And um, But like he said, you, you kind of just got to deal with what you have, and, and everybody's very capable of doing what they can do and giving to the team. So whatever we had, I know we had to switch up a lot of lineups. Um, we had people go down and, like, MO out for the season, so, stuff that you don't expect like that, and um, we just – you know, you just rely on what you have and, and uplift the other ones that are not playing because it is very difficult to not play the game that you love. But, yeah. Yeah, I think to add to that, um, I talk with Coach Schaefer a lot about this. It's just being ready when your number is called because you never know when that's going to be. Um, and that means bringing it every day in practice, no matter if you're on scout team or in the starting lineup. You just never know what's going to happen. Um and, I mean, I experienced that last year, too. Like, I started starting around the same time last year. And it's just you never know when the lineup's going to need a change or someone's going to get hurt, so you always have to be ready. Um, and you can't be ready right in that moment. It starts with all the preparation and practice the whole season. So I think that's just really important for us to always stay focused because you just never know. Next question will be front row, Cedric. Cedric Golden, also American Statesman. Um, for Shay and Shaylee, when Sonia went down, um, we know that Rory's the quarterback, but when Sonia went down, what were your conversations like? Because uh, you guys had to step up in her absence. Yeah, I mean, Sonia plays a huge part on our team. And, um, you know, she, she was averaging around 11, 12 points a game. And, you know, people, like we've been talking about, other people have to step, as, up, step up as well. And, um, you know, that's what we did. Yeah, um, we talked about how when you lose such a special player like Sonia, it's not like one person can just fill that role immediately. It's everyone needs to step up. Um, so we kind of took it as a team effort, not that like just one person needed to fill that role, but more everyone stepping up in their own way, um, not playing outside of their role, but just doing their job the best they could to help fill that role. Thank you for that question. Next question. Hi, Terry Middleton with Horns Illustrated. So, questions for all three of you. You know, you're ambassadors for the University of Texas, but have you ever stopped to think about your impact on women's sports just across the globe? You, know, you have fans watching; they'll be watching on TV. They come in here. Have you ever stopped to think about well the impact that you're having on the younger generation? Oh, for sure. Um, we like we meet with fans after their, our games, and just to see the line of like. I guess some schools from Austin or even closer like San Antonio just to come and watch you play and to want your autograph so bad and they're just they're willing to wait in like the crowd and whatnot. It feels nice to know that I'm affecting people and influencing the younger ones or or even on social media I get like small direct messages on Instagram like of children who are asking for advice. They're like, Rory, I know you're pretty short. Um, I'm pretty short too. Like, tell me how you got through it and all that and it. And I love to respond to um, the the they can be middle school to high school and around my age pretty much and it's just nice to know that I'm affecting the game much bigger than just here at Texas. So yeah, I mean I agree. It's always super fun and really cool just to see 
everyone line up to get our autographs after games. Like they took the time out of their night. They had their parents bring them or whatever it was just to watch us play. Um, and I think, it, I mean, yeah, you take a step back and you just really appreciate the platform we have um, and just being able to affect people other than our teammates and ourselves. Yeah, I also agree with them. And, you know, I'm the oldest of five and I have two younger sisters. And so, you know, I'm a big role model for them. And um, I mean, it's just like they said, after games and always talking to those little kids and um, it's just the next generation being able to, you know, inspire them and um, hopefully that they'll be able to be athletes like us. Thank you, ladies, for that answer. We're going to go to the Zoom now uh, and see if there are questions for student athletes. Um, Dennis De La Pena. Uh, please identify your affiliation and ask your questions to our players. Thanks, Barb. Um, Dennis Delapena from Fox 7 Austin Sports. Um, for Rory and Shay, Rory, you talked about just the other day how this team gets better. Vic Schaefer's teams get better during March. What have you guys done the past week? How have you improved this past week after that tough title game loss? Um, you can just see a lot of the grit that we have. Um, we're we're not gonna just fall after you know losing a couple of games. We're 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 willing to come back and you know practice is where it starts. And so in practice, you can just see like through every drill that we've been doing since the beginning of the season, like it's gotten so much better. Like we're breaking like goals in like one of our drills, like Maryland, easily easily now when the goal is really one twenty, but we get like one forty now. Um, just to see little stuff like that, those those things matter, and so. Um, like like you said, we we do really kind of skyrocket in March, and um, we're we're very ready. So, yeah, I mean, with any loss, um, especially that championship game, you have to take it as a learning experience, um, and not stay down because we have a lot more. We're fortunate enough to have more basketball to play after that, um, so we just have to take it as a learning experience. Obviously, we watched the film, we learned from it. It was painful. Um, and it should be painful, but um, we're just going to grow from that and see what we did wrong and how we can fix it for the next game. Dennis, do you have a, fo a follow-up question? Yeah, uh, if I can. The, the, the expectations are through the roof because of the recent tournament success. Um, but, but as you guys have been talking about, the personnel losses have really added up this year. Is it fair? Are those expectations fair from the fan base to think, Hey, elite eight or boss. Um, for sure. I mean, it is fair. You've done it once. You could do it again. Um, you know, there's not really a whole bunch of excuses that we would like to give, even though there probably is some. But I mean, we just have to do what we can do, um, and play with who we got, and give it our all, and just, you know, it, any game could be your last game, and that's how we should play. Yeah, I mean, my freshman year, I think we were a seven seed or something like that, six seed. Um, so anything's possible. We went to the Elite Eight that year. Um, we're fortunate to be at a higher seed this year, but anything can happen in March. But I think those expectations are very valid. Um, we have the pieces, and we've I think we've shown that we can play at a very high level. So we just need to play like that every game. Dennis, thank you for the question. We're going to switch back here to our Austin-based media. Next question from Danny Davis, Austin American Statesman. Um, for either Roy or Shay, um, Roy mentioned her a little bit ago, but what has Aaliyah's contributions been to this team since she got injured? Uh, she's She has a very big presence uh, to this team. Um, she's very uplifting, and I don't – I hate to like talk about that game where she did get injured, but you can just tell how close we were as a team. Um, it really brought us all together um, when she did get injured that day. I mean, there was like tears being shed throughout the whole room, and um, that's just not something you would want for anybody. But as somebody like Amo, you just you always wonder like why would that happen to her? But I mean, she's just so positive and uplifting. She's always coaching from the sidelines. You, she's doing like rehab with Rosemary, and she's still like coaching um, the fours and the fives, you know, just giving good energy throughout practice. And that's something you need from her, especially since she was that presence before she was injured. And, you know, you don't – she doesn't want that to go away, basically. So, Yeah, I mean, she's is still a very important piece of our team, even though she's not able to play. Um, like 
we always talk about like we need a mo on the road with us she needs to travel with us because she's that important um she just brings that energy and she also holds people accountable because she knows what we are capable of she's been a part of it and she's now on the outside looking in and she's kind of taking that like as a good thing right now and really seeing like what we can work on and she's able to hold us accountable. And it's always different hearing something from your own teammate than it is a coach necessarily. Um, I think sometimes you react better to it or you're like, Oh wow. She's like, I know she's being real with me, you know, like you don't like um, it's just different. And so I think it's actually really important and obviously you hate to see what happened, but um, we're definitely like, she's still using it as a benefit for us. We have time for a couple more questions um, for the student athletes before they're dismissed. Please identify yourself and your affiliation, sir. I'm Brian Bailey from Greenville, North Carolina with the uh, East Carolina basketball team. I just wanted to know if all three ladies, either one of you guys can answer all three. You know, they have s such an inexperienced squad as far as the NCAAs are concerned, and you guys have such experience. But what do you see on film you know, when you look at the, the Pirate team? Um, they're very talented. They're very athletic. Um, obviously, they won their conference championship game. That's hard to do. We know that. Um, so you have to respect them a lot. That's three games in three days. That takes toughness, um, and clearly they have it. So we've, I mean, we've watched a lot of film. They're they're very talented. They have very good pieces, and they just have a very like they have competitive spirit. You can see it in how they play. So you have to really respect that and be ready for that. Yeah, basically adding on to what Shay said, she's um, the team is very well coached. Uh, you can just tell the way they play, and um, they're here for a reason. So we got to get ready for them. Next question will come from Cedric Golden, Austin American Statesman. Uh, this is for all three. Um, tip offs at nine o'clock tomorrow. Tomorrow night. That's just brutal. Um, <laughs> what are you going to be doing all day? We'll be here, probably. Yeah. We'll uh, shoot around. Yeah. I, I mean, we, we, you know, those type of games, we've never had a game that late. Um, but, like, it's it's a set time. You can't change it. You just do what you have. And I'm pretty sure our schedule says we'll be here for mo majority of that day anyway. So, yeah, you may see us here and there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just say we'll have shoot around. We'll eat together as a team. Um, just mentally prepare ourselves uh, for the game that night. Yeah, I mean, East Carolina has to play at 9 p.m. too. It's not like we can use it as an excuse. So um, we'll be here just getting ready, try not to, like, lay around too much, just, like, stay moving, just stay ready for the game. We have time for one final question for the players. Go Thank ahead. Uh, for Shaylee. Yeah, uh, identify yourself, please, uh, and your affiliation. I'm Zach Smith. I'm with the Hill Country News. Uh, for Shaylee, how, how enjoyable has this season been for you, kind of coming in the way you did and – is this kind of a where you envision yourself being uh, in the position you're in right now? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been super fun. It's been a great experience that I'll never forget. And, you know, I've, I've grown as a player and super grateful for that and coach and giving me this opportunity to be here. Um, but, yeah, this is definitely where I envisioned myself being um, in the NCAA tournament, and hopefully, you know, we can make that run. That was a goal of mine that we would make it far in the tournament, and that's why, we came, that's why I came here. Ladies, thank you so much for your time. And uh, best of luck to you tomorrow against East Carolina as you open NCAA championship play. Thank Good you luck. very much. Thank, Thank you, you guys. You. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, questions for Coach Schaefer. All right, we'll start with uh, Danny Davis, Austin American Statesman. Um, Vic, first, is there a Sonia update? Yeah, she's uh, worked out two days in a row. Um, probably hadn't made it through a whole practice, but she's made it through a significant amount. So that's the update. And then what did you see from your team this week um, practice-wise and just kind of their response to the loss last week? Yeah, I, I, uh, <clears throat> they've been pretty consistent all year. Um, We've had, you know, we, we, uh, I was careful with them on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we came back and had a pretty good day Wednesday, yesterday. And, um, so they've been, they've been locked in and pretty focused. Um, you know, it was encouraging to have, uh, 
uh, saw you back in practice for periods of time and it gave us a you know added depth that we've been missing so but they've been they've been good this this group has been they've been really good all year long we've you know we've been pretty solid most of the year with our work ethic and focus and uh, again i think that's why they've had the success they've had question in the front row sir hi terry middleton with horns illustrated coach early in the year you talked about on your desk is a, a blueprint maybe of what happened last year what you guys did now you prepared for a game do you have that for the the NCAA tournament, and if you do, how are they doing compared to last year? So I think what you're talking about, Terry, is my uh, my book of practice plans, starting the first day all the way till till the last. And so, you know, that seems to be a, a popular question about, you know, how is it that, you know, we we seem to be able to have some pretty good success in March with our teams, and, um, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a creature of habit I'm, a, I'm pretty much the same just depends on who the opponent is we'll we'll tweak certain things in uh, defensively on on that day's defensive part of practice and maybe offense but just like this week I did the same thing this past Tuesday that I did last year on the Tuesday of the NCAA tournament I did the same thing on Wednesday that I did the same thing last year. In the, but you know what? It's the same thing I did for the five previous also. And so um, I think as you get closer to the game and, and um, the team that you're playing, you'll do certain things differently from a offensive philosophy and, and then how you guard them. But from a fundamental standpoint, those don't change. And that's part of our success this time of year is the culmination of what we do and how we do it every day throughout the course of the season. I mean, <clears throat> if you if you want to know what's in the bottle, that's in the bottle. In my opinion, you win games in February and March, in August and September when you're on the track at 6 a.m. Now that's just what I think. Don't make it right. But that's my, that's my philosophy. That's what I believe. That's why we get up at 6 a.m. and we're on the track three mornings a week <clears throat> in the preseason doing our conditioning. We're all in the same shoes, the same socks, the same shorts, the same T-shirt. We're all ready to go. And to me, that's when you win games in February and March, about what your first month and a half together in basketball. And so it's just always been a – it's just something that works. I, I don't know why you would change anything if something was worked over a period of time like it has for us. Thanks for that, Coach. Uh, next question, Cedric Golden, Austin American Statesman. Vic, have you ever had a season like this with the injuries and, uh, <laughs> and uh, off, off the court people leaving? Um, and, and if you have, what's changed the dynamic – behind the scenes, the stuff we don't see, because you're a planner. And so you've had to, you know, you've had to fly by the seat of your pants at times this year. Well, I, I don't, I, I think if you've done it as long as I have, you, you, you learn to adjust and, um, you know, so that you're not just ab-libbing and, and flying by the seat of your pants, so to speak, you know. Um, I think that's what somebody that's done it as long as I have and, having access to the people that I have access to to throw things off of and um, because I don't claim to know it all. And uh, again, it's why I surround myself with the staff that I surround myself with, people that are winners, that are highly motivated, that are like-minded and, um, and former players, you know, people that have been there, that understand. So, um, you know, we, <clears throat> like I said, I, I, I think that the key is, is you know, you dictate what you do with it. I can't control some of the things that have happened to us this year, without a doubt. And it's, from an injury standpoint, you know, it's, it's really been unlike anything I've ever, ever seen or experienced. And, and those things are heartbreaking. They're, 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 you, you just don't want to see anybody go through what we've been through, but yet 
I think it's why our team is as good as we are right now and as tough and as resilient as we are. Look, the game on Sunday, we missed 10 layups and we missed eight free throws. We miss, if we make two layups and make six free throws, that outcome's probably different. But that's the fine line that you have this time of year, whether it's in a conference tournament or the NCAA tournament. Everybody's good. And when you have those opportunities, you've got to make, you've got to do your job. You know, we've got to be better. And uh, I think that's what the film, y'all have heard me say this, the film doesn't lie. And I think that's what the film showed this week watching it. You can't just flush film. Like, I've heard that a lot. I don't even show that. Well, how are you going to learn? How are you going to, how's there going to be an accountability piece if you don't at least show some of the things that you can fix? or that need to be addressed. And so uh, the thing that my team knows about me is I'm always going to be real. Uh, they're going to know how I feel. And uh, good, bad, or indifferent. And, uh, and so I, I think with this team, uh, I'm really, again, I'm, I couldn't be more proud of them for their toughness and resilience uh, because they have really overcome a lot. And um, it's just really amazing. You, you think about it here at the University of Texas. It's been 20 years since they won a conference championship. Um, and this group did it under some really adverse situ you know, situations. So really excited for them, happy for them, proud of them. And um, you know, we'll, see, we'll see what the rest of the season holds. The next two questions will come from our Associated Press representatives. First, Mark Rosner and then Jim Vertuno. Hey, Rick, you mentioned doing the same thing over and over, year to year. But you have two of those three players going 40 minutes a night. Have you made, had to make any kind of concessions or ease up in practice at all? Especially Shay. I mean, she, her minutes have spiked a lot. Yeah, and, and that's probably the, the most uh, well-conditioned and finely tuned athlete on our team. She's certainly the most athletic and the fastest. Um, you know, in August and September, I'm constantly looking around for Coach Flo because if he's out there when we're <laughs> out there running 200s, like I'm bored to, to death he'll steal her. Like she's good. I mean, she is fast. And um, But I don't worry about her because she is in great shape. And, um, you know, some of the others maybe a little bit. You know, Shaylee, new to our program, probably hadn't practiced as long and as hard. And um, as well as those other three that, that came in, the transfers. And, of course, you're always worried about freshmen. But um, I've probably had to, yeah, probably had to tweak a little bit just because of our lack of depth. But, um, and that's only from a, a time management type thing in practice. But we do the same things. We just might do it, not do it as long, for sure. Yeah, and you know what? We might take more breaks. We might take more water breaks. And I'm not one that plans water breaks in practice. Like, there's nowhere on my practice that says, hey, we're going to take water. Like, they get it when they can get it. That's just the way it's always – we've always done it. Next question from hey, Jim. Jim Vertuno, Associated Press. Vic, a little bit bigger picture on the women's tournament. Um, you've been through a few of these. Um, I'd like your thoughts on um, the new regional structure of the of the uh, Seattle and Greenville and, and putting more games in those sites and what that might do for the fans or TV and just the, the women's tournament in general, positive, negative, indifference. What do you Yeah, I think my answer is going to be I think the verdict's still out. I mean, we don't know what the attendance is going to be like. Uh, I can speak for Greenville because I've been there, um, played there in, in that – conference tournament and that's a great city that really has embraced women's basketball uh, it always helps to have uh, a hometown school that's three hours from there that's part of it and that'll have that again this year that has a great following but I think we have to wait and see what you know what teams are in the east and what teams are in the west because those fan bases are going to have to travel I mean there's nothing in the midwest you know, and I, I hardly, you know, uh, I don't know what that's going to look like, I guess, is my answer. So I, I'm, I'm anxious to see, probably a little concerned, but I'm anxious to see what it looks like. And I, I think the powers that be believe it's going to be great, and, and, and I'm, I'm hopeful that it will be. But 
well, those are two opposite ends of the spectrums, west and east, three different time zones. You know, there's three time zones between both of them, and there's just nothing in the Midwest, and we've got a lot of teams in the Midwest. So we'll see. You know, hard for sometimes for families to travel, and, you know, those are both a long way for a lot of people. We have time for just a few more questions. We're going to start with um, here in Austin question, and then we're going to go to our Zoom media. So, um, Dennis De La Pena, you'll be up second. Question here. Coach Brian Bailey from WNCT in Greenville. Uh, glad to be here. This is awesome, awesome place. Just your thoughts on East Carolina, what you've seen on tape, that kind of thing. Brian, welcome to Austin and the University of Texas. It's a great place, and uh, I know you'll be treated great, and uh, you'll enjoy your time here. And uh, you got you a heck of a team that you're following. I mean, they're well coached, as Rory said. Um, you know, we've we've really. I know my team and myself watching film have really come to admire and respect that team and what they've accomplished. Uh, they are, <clears throat> you know, they're going to be a big challenge for us. They, they play uh, as we have our own style, they have their own style, and it's unique and very effective for them. They force 23 turnovers a game. They average over 13 steals a game. Uh, they're great in the open floor and in transition. They have difference players. On the floor, I have one of the most exciting freshmen in the country. Um, it's uh, you know they're 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 really really talented. They have great point guard play, um, and of course you know uh, McNeil is she's special. I mean you know, she's she's played it at 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 uh, you know I think she was at Clemson. Is that right? Before she was she was there, and and uh, and now she's she's. Um, She's there, and, and she's, you know, I don't think she'll be intimidated the least. So we'll, we've, got our, we've got our hands full. And, uh, again, lots of respect and admiration for, for this team. And, and um, again, I think Coach has done a great job with them. And you talk about competitive now, competitive spirit, toughness. Um, you watch them throughout the course of – their season, and then in that tournament, and what they were able to accomplish, it's, it's, it's really, um, you know, it's admirable. And so we, they've got my attention. I can assure you, and my team as well. So we'll, uh, you know, we're going to have to play well for sure. Thank you, Coach. We're going to go to our final question from Dennis De La Pena from the Austin Fox TV Network. Dennis. earlier but you've raised the bar so high with those elite eight runs already um how different does it feel this year in the locker room as you start this march um as far as expectations and, and do your do your young ladies get any fuel from that well i just dennis i think when you sign up to come to the university of texas whether you're a coach or a player it's what you sign up for um you know the expectations here in any and every sport are the same um, I've said this before, you know, last year we make the Elite Eight, finish um, top ten in the country, and that's not even good enough for top half at the University of Texas out of 19 sports. You know, we have four national champions, six others that were runner-ups. And, uh, you know, Elite Eight's pretty good in basketball, men or women, and that doesn't even finish in the top half here. So um, I just think that's the – that's the bar. The standard is the standard. And uh, certainly for us in women's basketball, um, you know, we've talked about the standard, what my expectations are, um, the miserable way to live, as we've talked about. And, but that's just that's it. That's just the way it is, and it's what we, what we sign up for, and, and uh, it's what we strive to, to accomplish. So um, I think for our kids that are – I think for our kids that have come back, I think they understand it. I think for the new kids coming in, it's why they chose Texas. And, and I think that's, that's it. And, and you have to admire those kids that choose to come here because they know that's the standard, especially those four that transferred in. And then, you know, the ones that have been here, they, they have learned to embrace it. And, um, and so I think for all of us um, – it's, this is the time of year in that we've worked so hard throughout the course of the season to get to. That's why when you see all these teams that play and if they do stub their toe and they lose, that's why they're so upset because you work so hard to get to this point 
you're not ready for it to be over. You know how hard you've worked. You know the blood, sweat, and tears that you put into it. You're emotionally involved. You're attached. You're committed. It's just really hard. And so there's so much joy when you win, and yet there's so much pain when you when you if you do happen to lose. So I think that's that shows the commitment of each and every team, each and every coach, and it's what makes this the greatest sporting event in in college athletics. And uh, so uh, we're certainly excited to be a part of it. Again, the University of Texas, myself, we appreciate the opportunity to host. I know my university is going to do an unbelievable job, and these three teams are going to have a great experience here. Coach Schaefer, thanks so much for your time today, and best of luck tomorrow against East Carolina. Thanks, Barb. Thank you, Coach. All right. Praise the Lord and hook them horns. Thanks for being here, y'all. Appreciate your coverage. And, folks, that will conclude this news conference with Texas. A recording of this press conference will be posted in, in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Press conference transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly also in the Hub. Thanks again for joining us. A reminder that the first 15 minutes of Texas's practice will be open to the media today. That is from 110 to 125. Thank you.